Dun, da, da, da. I'm Robert Sawyer. And I'm Mrs. Sawyer. And we are the only black kids in, in the, the class. class. <laughs> Back with another episode of Married Besties, laughing through life and judging a whole lot. <laughs> what are you ready to a judge little. today? <laughs> I'm not ready to judge anything. <laughs> Then what are we doing here? This is what this podcast is. We're giving her, I'm going to give my opinion on some things. This podcast is judgment and giggles. Giggles, yes. I like to laugh, so that's a good thing. Judgment and teehees. Teehees. Teehee. Oh, okay. Like you're touching the Pillsbury Doughboy's stomach. (laughs) Do do they still have the Pillsbury Doughboy? It might be the, the is Pillsbury that, Dough person. No. Is, is that is that the is that like dating ourselves? Like, I haven't really seen that. Like I haven't seen that in commercial in a long time. I don't watch TV, so I don't know I what commercials seen are. Haven't commercials in a long time either, though. So that might be true. I get no u- commercials on my YouTube. I don't watch TV like that. Mm. I wonder if there is. I'm on the radio. Boy, though. I'm in my bubble. I don't Me know what's too. going on out there. I don't either. I did hear this new rapper though. A new rapper? Snoop Doggy Dog. I think he's gonna do something. He's new? Yeah, he came out with this song. First, he was with his boy, Dr. Drizze. Okay. He had a song, G Thang. Yes. Now he's got a solo album coming out. I think he's going to do something. Oh, okay. So I'm up on the new stuff. But other than that, man. So man. that's the last time you had a new stuff. No, I've heard, <laughs> I've heard new stuff since then. Okay. I think the Four Tops had some things Oh, going Lord. On. Yeah. Okay. So you're not in with the new. So no. I don't, we don't know if Pillsbury Doughboy is still around. No, but you know what? I do. I, like Last year, I um, last year, and I got my top five on Spotify. I was uh-huh. like, man, it's like the same top five I had last year and partially of the year before. Uh-huh. And then there was one night where we were listening to a bunch of 90s music. Mm-hmm. And we started going into all these things. And I, I was like, I listened to this so much as a kid. Like uh, we were listening to Oasis and we were listening to put on some Bush for you, mm-hmm. things that I loved mm-hmm. back then. It's like, well, why don't I, if you had told me in the 2000s, I would have had access to all the music ever created pretty much. I would have, that would have blown my mind. And now here I am and I'm listening to the same songs over and over again. So I've made it my mission to listen to a wider variety of music. Oh, that's good. I have my country playlist. I have okay. my '90s stuff. I don't have. I don't make too many playlists. Country's okay. only one because there's I'm, so many playlists already that are that are pretty good curated. Yeah, um, Spotify does a good job of that. But I'm making sure good. I'm listening to all the things that have shaped me to be who I am. So I'm listening to my jazz more often. I'm listening to everything. Ooh, yeah, listen to that stuff. You know, but my mood really motivates like what I'm gonna listen to. Yep. Yeah, I listen to a lot of music, uh, especially when I'm working. It helps me concentrate. So it's like if I need to like think, ponder and like, you know, come up with something then I listen to like a lot of classical music or maybe some soundtracks, you know, John Williams is my jam. Right. And that like helps me like clear my mind and think about stuff. But then if I have like work that I know I have to like execute, like actually do things then I listen to like, um, jazz or something that's gonna that's in the background that's not like too in front in your face right so you hear it but it's just there to help me focus on what it is i'm working on it's like kind of, sometimes if it's too too silent i don't i don't work well like that do you find that sometimes i need the silence oh i i, I, really I don't like to listen to podcasts or no i don't oh, music I to people talking with words to yeah, yeah, yeah if i'm typing a lot of things i can have music i don't want words that's fair. My brain is thinking something different if I hear lyrics. So all those those genres I just talked about, there's no words. So the majority of the music I listen to is no words. In the car, that's different. I do like to sing along and that sort of thing. And I listen to podcasts. But when I'm working, I don't like words. I like just the music, like instrumental stuff. Are there any stories that we've done in the last however many episodes that you've come back to, thought about a different way? No. You don't think about them ever again? <laughs> Forget these people and their, their <laughs> terribly sad lives. No, Too happy I, to be worried about you simpletons, you peasants. No, not that. Just some, sometimes 
I'll, I'll have like a situation or an issue. And if it's someone who listens to our podcast, cause you know, a lot of people listen to our podcast, I'll like reference it. It's like that. I've had that for a couple. Of, I can say I can think of two episodes where that has happened. It's like this. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. It's like this and you. Yeah. It's like that and like this and like that and you see yes. that new stuff. See? <laughs> I always find a way to work it back. Yeah. It's my special full circle. It's my special. If you know, you know the callbacks. <laughs> I live for a callback. There might be people listening that are like, "Huh? What are they talking about?" <laughs> and that's why. We encourage you to go back and listen to all the episodes before uh-huh. so you can be on the inside with the classmates. Yeah. No, I was talking about this and that. <laughs> oh, if you don't know what that is, then chances are you weren't listening to this podcast anyway. <laughs> oh, you never know. You never know. Right. I wonder I wonder how old our youngest listener is. Huh? Eleven. Maybe. You know why I say eleven? Why? Because my nephew. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I, hope he's not I always say our nephew, and you always say your nephew. Yeah. <sighs> Interesting. He was my nephew before he was our nephew, so I apologize hmm. for being stuck in that time. Que interesante. <laughs> so, what stories are we getting into today? I don't know. You tell me. That's surprising because these are all stories that you sent me. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, okay. So I have not read many of these. Some of them I have now. Okay. Because this is our redo of this episode. So some of them I have now. But then the other ones, I don't know who they are. Okay. I guess we'll find out. Like to hear it? Here it go. I gave a nice gift card to the former colleague that stole my tips at work. I work weekends at a local brewery. I am fortunate that I do not need the money, but it gives me something to do because my wife works a ton of hours in the medical world, and I find it to be a good way to engage with people while also being forced to be out and about instead of sitting at home bored. I made the mistake of communicating that this was not a necessity job for me to a coworker. He got distant then, and where we chatted a lot prior, L, we'll call him, started being weird. No big deal. I'm not there for L. Well, soon after that, I had a large group come in and L took one of three $100 bills off the table and pocketed it. Mm -hmm. That was meant as a tip for me. This group stayed all day to watch a tournament. They were there from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. I did confront him and he denied it. He swore up and down he would never do that. Mm -hmm. But he was the only one in the party room other than me. It wasn't worth raising a stink because this guy doesn't do well financially and I know he struggles to pay his rent. I maintained being cordial with L to the point that he must have thought we were back to how it used to be. Hmm. But I just didn't really give a fast forward. <laughs> 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 but I just didn't really give a F. Fast forward to the beginning of last month and L lets everybody know he is going and working at a place on the tourist strip. Mm-hmm. His last day came that I was working with him, which happened to be a Saturday. I overheard him admit to another employee not only that he took the one hundred dollars, but that he regularly took his bus fare from my tables. That's they tipped cash, up. and he was laughing it off messed because up. I didn't need it. Huh. I was miffed. The other employees, <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all kill me with these. Things. I was miffed. You, but you ever been miffed in your life? Never. I've been miffed before. Miffed. Didn't say it. Didn't call it that. But I've been miffed before. The other employee came and told me that he said that, which was cool, but I said not to worry about it. And I appreciated her telling me, here's the revenge. First, it's important to know that the rule at the brewery is that all servers have to have a manager approve all final bills and cash out all former employees to combat internal theft. Mm -hmm. Second, I only work weekends, but the brewery planned a nice little going away cheers for L on his final day, which was a Monday. Hmm. The day after I heard Elle's confession to stealing from me, I had a short shift. I bought a gift card from the brewery. They were supposed to be no less than $10, but I rang one up for 75 cents. (laughs) I then wrote 75 on a sticky note and stuck it to the gift card, which I put in a dollar store good luck greeting card. I didn't sign it. The managers already had a nice little gift bag for Elle in their office, and I stuck my card with a gift card on top of that gift bag, and it just said Elle's name on the envelope. The next weekend, which I had off, when L came in with a date, as it was told to me, L and his girlfriend both ate and had a couple of beers. <laughs> and when he tried to pay the manager with his gift card, he was about $74.25 <laughs> short. 
and his date walked out. L had to call his dad to pay his bill. I hope you enjoyed all my tip money. It doesn't say this, but let me read the, the last line as, as the original poster meant it. I hope you enjoyed all my tip money, bitch. <laughs> that was Whoa. hilarious. That was hilarious. <laughs> Whoa. That was the long run. Don't get on that guy's. <laughs> don't get on that guy's bad side. I thought that was tastefully done. And you know what happened at the end? L was probably there, just miffed, <laughs> not knowing what had happened. He was miffed. I thought that was tastefully done. That was that was that was nice revenge. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't even have too many comments. I don't want to. I don't want to offend this guy. He might find me. No, he's not gonna do anything with you. Okay. I thought that, I thought that was perfect. He might miff me up. That was that's totally something I would do. Here's one that was sent to me and suggested that we read. So I have not read it. I just read the title, and you've not read it. Okay. And we don't know how crazy or poorly written it is. Okay. My coworker's wife cheated on him with me, and I unknowingly told him all about it. Oh. This all happened about six years ago. I, 26-year-old male, was working as a correctional officer. I worked the evening shift from 2 to 10 p.m. Me and a friend from work, let's call him Ed, decided to work overtime at a different prison for a week because him and his wife just had their second child, and he needed the money. Mm. So being a good friend and extremely bored, I decided to tag along. After work one night, me and Ed get all the paperwork done, and we set off to go into a hotel that the prison paid to put us in. What they didn't tell us was that we had to share a room. Ooh. So me and Ed get to talking about life and things. We get to the topic of my sex life. Why? Mm -mm. I ain't never done that like that. We get to the topic of my sex life, and at the time, was just a few girls here and there. Nothing special. And he says... While we are here, might as well have some fun. I didn't think much of it and went to bed because we had a long week ahead of us. We had to work around 15 hours the next day. After work the next day, I meet up with Ed to head back to the hotel, and he tells me that a couple of girls want to grab dinner and a drink. I'm all for the four of us going out and letting off some steam after work. Well, one thing leads to another, and all of us are back in the hotel room drinking. Oh. And Ed takes one of the girls to bed. Oh, no. Let's call her Jane. While they are going at it, I'm making moves on the others. Let's call her Samantha. While Ed and Jane are going at it, me and Samantha are losing clothes. <laughs> I've never, you just said taking off your clothes, bro. <laughs> me and Samantha are losing clothes and made it to the bed. We have sex for a while. I bust. Take a shower and pass out. We did this every night for a week until me and Ed had to head back home and start back at our unit. On our first day back, one of my coworkers, let's call him Nick, asked how the overtime went because he was thinking of going next. That's when Ed chimed in and told the story of the girls we met. Nick looked at me and started asking questions about the girl, what she was like and other things. Then he paused and asked if she had a tattoo on her leg. I was shocked at his question. Before I had time to answer, he asked if her name was Samantha. I family stammered out, yeah, why? He just took a deep breath and said, that's my wife. We got married last month. So we are doing overtime to help our finances get back on track. I was stunned and said, sorry. I didn't know she was married and left the next day. I was forced to work as far away from him as possible. My lieutenant found out and told me that he was going to work the same position for as long as Nick worked there or I could reassign. I chose to resign. I never found out what happened after everyone stopped talking to me. What? What? No, I, I'm still. I thought you had more to that. You know, I always say these things are so well written. This one was not. This was not. This was not. I agree. That was not a good story. And he said this was about six years ago. But if you want, if you want, he'll he'll get back in touch and find out what happened. What? Yeah, I don't know about this one. That was bad. But why would everyone stop talking to him? He didn't go after this guy's why wife. Why do we care? Well, hold on. Our whole show is about why do we care? No, I mean, like, why Why would the, the people who stop talking to him care? So I'm saying, like, why Why? Why would they? I find that people have this strange sense that uh, society is supposed to be one way. Despite week after week after week of reading these stories that and show you society married. is not that way. Poster wasn't married. He didn't even know she was married. Yeah. What's that got to do with him? 
What's your man got to do with me? <laughs> I'm not trying to hear that, see? <laughs> yeah, that was lackluster. That was a lackluster one. Yeah. See what happens when I don't read them? Oh, well. I blame you. But if you, I don't blame you. I blame you, not you. <laughs> but if you think you can send us better stories, email us at asktheblackkids at gmail.com. Send over that juicy stuff. That good, that, that, that juicy stuff. Not that. Yeah, that one's kind of, that was kind of meh. That was less than meh. Am I the asshole for giving my ex-girlfriend her ticket for Taylor Swift, but canceling everything else? I'm working overseas right now, and I managed to get tickets for Taylor Swift in Singapore. The concert is this coming Saturday. My plan was to fly my girlfriend over for a little vacation. It's a long ways from Connecticut, so she was going to be staying for 10 days. I was clear and told her that we would have two weekends together as well as the evenings, but that I still had to work during the daytime. Last week, she called me and said she was not okay with us being long distance and that after the concert, we were over. Oh. I asked for clarification. She said she would come for the 10 days and we could have fun, <laughs> but that we were donezo. He didn't say donezo. I said that. I can have fun without paying for it. <laughs> I'll play it. I transferred her the one ticket and canceled everything else. She called me to scream at me for canceling the flights and hotel. I told her that I wasn't going to discuss it and hung up. I blocked her on everything. I am hearing from people back home that she has lost her shit. She has been bragging about getting to see Taylor Swift and the vacation. Now she's telling everyone that I canceled the plans just out of the blue. I guess that is sort of true. I did not discuss it with her before I made my decision and did what I did. I unblocked her long enough to offer to buy the ticket back if she was, wasn't going to use it. That conversation was unpleasant and involved a lot of profanity. The upshot was she would rather let it go to waste than let me have it. Hmm. Her friends have been defending her and calling me an asshole. My position is that I would feel like a John <laughs> flying her over for fun. <laughs> you know, it's hard out here for a pimp. <laughs> oh, he had to keep that same energy for when he canceled He stood on business. That's it. Sir. <laughs> it's funny. I heard another story about a Taylor Swift uh, overseas thing. Yeah, I don't. I really don't remember it now. But it was. It was what a dummy goes through all that and then gonna can't tell you where it's, where it's over before the trip. Who does that? She thought she was that bad. She thought she <laughs> ate. She thought she had it going on. <laughs> she thought she ate. Oh, at least you give me for ten more days because we're done. <laughs> They're like poetic justice. <laughs> I, I'm going to let you get some, but I was going to quit you when we got back home anyway. And it's like, okay. <laughs> and then he slapped you. Oh, yeah. Oh. Not condoning violence. Don't condone the violence. But that's. Uh, but we do condone this level of pettiness. That was. That was. That's, that's fun. Don't make. Make no mistake. This is petty. That's not petty. It's petty. I, I, see, I disagree with that. That's not petty. He could have told her. Well, like he could have told her right then and there. Um, I don't. I don't feel comfortable. He could have expressed it. Oh, see, see, Patty would just be, you blocked a number and you sold a Taylor Swift ticket and you didn't even tell her. That's what you call Patty? Yeah. Our Pettys are different. That's, 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 that's what I would have done. My Patty, he would have made sure everything was canceled for her and then posted nonstop to his story with that new bae <laughs> at the Taylor Swift concert, preferably her sister or her cousin or her best friend. Because who was saying no to a free trip to Singapore? Only if he. he Only she Taylor was. I, I probably would have sold it. Hi, <laughs> it's me. <laughs> I would have sold it. For our next story. Am I the asshole for leaving a bar crawl early without my girlfriend? Hmm. I'll say that one again. Am I the asshole for leaving a bar crawl early without my girlfriend? I, 27-year-old male, just got home about 45 minutes ago and am currently dealing with my very pissed-off girlfriend, 29-year-old female. Mm. We have been dating since November after meeting off a hinge. Every year, the weekend before St. Patrick's Day weekend, her friend from high school, Dean, has a birthday bar crawl. A lot of people go. There must have been like 40 people there. My girlfriend has known Dean since high school, and she even dated him for a bit then. We are much older now, so that doesn't bother me. Hmm. What bothered me is that my girlfriend basically barely talked to me the entire time we were there. 
We got to the pregame around noon and went to the first bar at like 2 p.m. She kept running off with her friends. and I didn't know a single person who was there. These aren't friends she sees that often, so I've never met them before. I spent most of the time at the first three bars looking for her. She was pretty drunk and hyper, and I know she was looking forward to seeing these friends, but it still felt like she ditched me. I even expressed to her that if she wanted to go without me, it would be okay because I am kind of shy and not great with large groups of people I don't know. She insisted that I go, however, so I did, only for her to not be around me most of the time. That's messed up. When it came time to go to the third bar, I found her and told her I had an Uber coming back to my apartment and she can come over when she's done. (laughs) I said I didn't care at all if she wanted to stay, but I was done and didn't really feel wanted at all. She tried to get me to stay, but I insisted it was all good, but I just wanted to leave. Now she's saying she's not going to come over and she's mad at me for leaving, even making snide remarks about how I don't let myself socialize. So was I an asshole here? No, not at all. No, not at all. That's a that's a respectful man. That's a nice guy. He's There's, one of the good ones. He's one of the good ones. And I would have gone to bar number two or three. Hey. I mean, that's crazy. I don't know. You know, I, I do find that sometimes like I in and, and speaking with people and I'm not going to say it's like gender based because, you know, there may be more women than men that do it. But. It's like, oh, no, you can, I'm going to make you suffer because you're in a relationship with me and I'm doing this so you have to kind of thing. Like a brat? Yeah. You got to put up with my spoiled behavior? Yeah, like that's ridiculous. He said, go do it. Go go have fun. Enjoy your friends. Leave me out of it. Yeah, but, you know, she needs him to be there. So she can ignore him. Yeah, but at least he's still putting his effort into her. Oh, no, that's bull. You said you don't want to make it. About gender. That's okay, cool. let's not make it about gender. A lot of people uh-huh. operate in an attention economy. I, I agree. So the amount of attention you pay to me is how I'm going to validate myself. Yeah. And my ability to control your attention yep. gives me power. Yep. And I like power. Yep. That's simple. A lot people. of relationships are transactional. Wow. I'm glad we're not in a relationship. By the way, I need you to send me back. <laughs> Did you pay me back? <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm not even mad. If y'all, if, if you're in a relationship where you talk about paying each other back, that's cool. Oh yeah, by all means, that's that's whatever the rules are for engagement in that relationship. I think no one outside the relationship has a say. If that's what works for people, that's what works for the people. The problem is. People make up these rules along the way. Correct. And like, well, why aren't you following the rules? But rule? they didn't communicate it. Or it wasn't agreed on. Or it's like, I give you $300. Cool. You give me $30 and you're like, you're sending me a cash app request. <laughs> and it's like, but I, well, I need my money. <laughs> or, or, or the story I heard in real life, and this was not a therapy session. This is just on the streets. People just be talking to me. They're like, aren't okay. you the guy from Only Black Kids? And I'm like... <laughs> He is I nine. <laughs> and she told this, you know, they were together. They have a child. He's paying all the bills. Mm-hmm. They live together. He has a car. She doesn't have a car. So he's giving her his car until he could buy a car, which he did. Jeez. And when things got a little rough from a little tight, he asked her to pay the light bill. Huh? And at first she sighed and sucked her teeth. Then she said she's going to do it. And she paid. She did. Okay. But he said things were tight for a while because he just done all these things. You know, the baby, the car, all these things. Yeah. So by the third month, she comes to him and says, I don't feel comfortable paying this bill. Gee, shit. Wait. I don't feel comfortable paying this bill. Wait, she's not, she not paying, now, she keep not in paying mind, the rent or the car? Keep in mind, she has a job. Uh-huh. She, was, she really didn't take a long maternity leave. That's how that's how American. If if you're outside of the country watching that, this, that's, that's, in this country, that's two whole podcasts together. Maternity live together. is like uh, that's two whole podcasts together. We're not even gonna talk about it's, that. It's it's been it's been two hours. You're not yeah. coming back. That's well, that's maternity yeah. leave in the U.S. We're not even gonna go down that one. Um, he didn't get any paternity leave. Uh, I don't feel comfortable paying this bill. But he she don't pay nothing else. And so when he's telling me the story, I said, "Does she feel comfortable having electricity?" Like like. 
Is like, it, is does it the baby does the baby benefit from electricity? Yeah, what is that? Yeah. Oh, so no. just to be fair, she works. She has no. a paycheck. Uh uh-uh. uh He pays everything. She pays her cell phone. Mm-mm. She has a full time job. Well, you know what? I'm that even... relationship is transactional. Well, I'm just gonna say she's with the wrong person. That might work in a different relationship. Yeah. That one just doesn't work for that one. That's that's what I'm going to say about that. I was watching a podcast of your boys, and he had a lady on there, and she said if her man pays for everything and he was down bad, she's going to give him three months. What? After three months, the relationship's over. Oh, no. And I was like, wait, wait, let me make sure I understand. Oh, no. So if y'all were married for 10, 15 years, and this man was good this whole time, dream dream partner and then he had three rough months dunzo that's a wrap and she stood on her business oh no and said uh yeah well, you know like you know i sometimes i think about when when people talk about getting married they and shouldn't like, and like people have like different <laughs> like vows and stuff so then i don't know what that maybe that the whole marriage thing is something different for different people. But I think you that's told me, was. you told me, you heard people talk about. Well, yeah, you don't, you know, your first marriage doesn't have to be that long. Yeah, that's how people are. That's ri- I've like I've talked. So the first time I heard, it, I was like, okay, this must just be somebody who's like, you know, out there. I've heard it multiple times. Like at least I can think in my head right now four different people who don't believe marriage is like it's not forever. Like, it's like dating. No, it's like a house. Like this is not your forever house. Like that. That's how that's how the marriage is for them. It's not the forever marriage. You're my forever house. Yeah, you're mine too, babe. I'm not. What is that? I might but, get a rental property here and there. No, 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 no. Might have a little no, condo or something. No, 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 no. You're my forever house. That's not how that works. What are you talking about? No. I'm talking about real estate. What are you uh-huh, talking about? Sure. <laughs> I don't. I don't appreciate the implications. <laughs> but yeah, that's 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 crazy. In our next story, Mm -hmm. am I the asshole for saying I'm entitled to food my parents buy? I'm going to keep this short. I'm in college and living with my parents. My parents had an oops baby. My sister's only four. They can't afford childcare, so instead of getting a part-time job to help out, I take care of her when they're at work. We got into an argument because they haven't gone grocery shopping and were running low on food. Mm. They used the last of the bread for themselves tonight, and when I brought up what I would eat, we got into an argument. They told me I'm grown and it's not their responsibility to feed me anymore. I told them that's BS and I'm entitled to food because I'm taking care of their kid. They're now calling me an an entitled brat and saying if I don't fix my attitude, they'll kick me out. (laughs) I told them go ahead because then they'll be homeless because they can't afford (laughs) childcare, even with both of them working. My relatives are telling me I'm in the wrong because I'm an adult and need to grow up. So am I the asshole? Oh, wow. I'm going to say no. I think she should just move out. Yeah. You're the adult that needs to grow up, but your parents get to... Get free labor. Behave childish. Yeah. And I, I don't. I really don't have a problem with family helping family. Yeah. But, but come on. That's abusive. But you have to buy your own food. And it wasn't like gourmet food. She's not talking about a filet mignon. She's talking about peanut butter jelly. For a sandwich. She has to make her own. Her own sandwich. And she has to make up. her own sandwiches. But that's even, that's just, they, they're shooting bad. She be, yeah, she do better on her own. She Would you out. say these are bad humans? Bad. Mm. That's mm-mm, terrible. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. You can't, and then they're going to tell her, oh, you're the adult. It's your fault. Okay, let me go to the adult out here. Yeah, so she's not getting any money. Mm. That's not getting money, and there's no peanut butter and jelly. Mm. Come on, Ooh. financial aid, financial aid, so th- food bank, farm share. Come on. This is one sent to me from Mrs. Sawyer, so I didn't I didn't read this. She says all she was left with were the choices of plain white rice, dry cereal, or peanut butter on a spoon. Damn. I mean, damn. That's messed up. I mean, damn. That's messed up. Not even an egg to put in the rice. Jeez. Dirty game. Yeah. At least if I had some egg, I'd make some fried rice. My micromanaging boss got fired. 
I work at a large tech company that you would recognize. I am mid-career, 40s, but new at the company. I started there a few years ago and was very excited. Big pay bump and title bump. Hmm. Unfortunately, I was put under the most old school micromanaging person you could think of. Oh, man. He had been there forever and no one liked him except a couple of people in the C-suite. So I guess that's why he stayed so long. Exactly. He decided that he didn't want me to do half of what was in my job description, which was the half I was most excited about. Things like traveling to conferences or taking big clients out for dinner. He said it didn't make financial sense. Meanwhile, others with my title were doing that and landing bigger commitments from their clients. I oversee a lot of catering. He would not approve anything where I tipped. So I'm having to order a couple thousand dollars worth of food and not tip. More than one restaurant finally caught on and started to let us know they were unavailable when we called. Ugh. I started using caterers, which were more expensive than the local restaurants, but included a service fee in their estimates. So ultimately, the company was spending more for shittier food. Terrible. He also is constantly talking about people's bodies. He's a gay man. I'm also gay. And he purposely took an office across from a cubicle where an attractive straight man was stationed and would say things like, Henry's a little chubbier lately, or he started running and you can tell I'm overweight, so I just didn't know what to say. Inappropriate. I would just be quiet and then alert HR. He would also say things like, Filipinos are hard workers. We should make them race and the black people would win. <gasps> it's always black people who loot or fat people are lazy. Like... What does any of that have to do with anything? I am not great at standing up for myself, so I would go be quiet and go to HR, and they would say, that's just how he is. Mm. That's, a, that's a trash HR. Trash. That's a trash that's HR. Trash. That's trash. He also wouldn't let me take time off after my cousin died because it wasn't a, quote, close family member. Mm. I have so much PTO saved up because he barely ever approved anything. He also would call me constantly at 6 p.m. to talk about what happened during the day. Mind you, he insists on being CC'd in every email and in every meeting I'm in, so these were unnecessary. Damn. Yes, I did look for a new job. I got close on a few roles, but there's not a lot that paid what I'm getting paid. And I've got a family to support. So I upped my anxiety medication and took it day by day. Oh, that was terrible. All of a sudden, last week, he stops calling and emailing. I sent him a report a week late, and he says, thanks. Any other time, I'd be dressed down. He cancels every meeting we have. Since I need his approval for everything, I'm unable to do my job. Yesterday, HR puts a meeting on my calendar called Catch Up at 3 p.m. Hmm. I'm sure I'm toast. And the reason my boss has been absent is because he knows. I reach out to my recruiter and spruce up my LinkedIn. Then I get on the call and the HR director tells me my boss has been fired. <laughs> he was supposed to spend the last two weeks offloading the me that I've been promoted to his position and I'm getting a raise retroactive the last Monday. She also says, thank you for being patient and keeping HR in the loop these last few years. Y'all, I'm shocked. Stuff like this never happens. I'm still processing. Thought you might like this rare example of corporate justice. That's no justice. I don't know if that's justice. It don't, don't take no three years justice. for HR to make a move. No, it does not. Three years that's or a couple terrible, of years. That's a terrible HR. <laughs> Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Last few years. Oh, wow. That's terrible. What a, what a bad person. That's a trit ass HR. That, I mean, but I, I do understand those, um, that stressor, right? Like he knew it was bad, but he's got a family counting on him. He's got responsibility. Yep. People would just say, oh, he should have left a long time ago. Why didn't he just leave? And it's like, well, you can't just like up and do it like that. So it's kind of like a. It's very abusive. It's very, it's, it's bad. You just think about that. And he was walking around all day with that heavy weighted thing. He had to get the money so he can get the power and then get the respect. <laughs> yeah. That's what you need in life. That's what you need in life. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad that one worked out to his advantage. But That's a trash HR, but that boss was hella toxic. Super. Super. That, that's why I said hurt people hurt people. Like that person, he really was a bad person. That was a bad human. Mm. He really didn't know what to do. He just wanted to talk bad about people and micromanage because like if he was at that level, how does he have time for all of that? Yeah, it's terrible. Terrible, terrible. Which brings us to your favorite. 
<laughs> it's not my favorite. It's not your favorite. Was, oh, no, 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 no. I think, oh, no, no, no. I think, I think that's what the people It's not like, my favorite. But you like to do the voice. So I, I like do to... it for the people. So I like to hear the voice, though. What's the voice? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Toxic confessions. <laughs> that was good. That was good. We're going to use that one. <laughs> no, I need you to do it. No, that's cool. Come on, babe. Do it. Do what? <laughs> What sex? What, what segment is it? Say it. No, I can't say it anymore. I guess that leads me to say, here we are with another round of Toxic Confessions. <laughs> Gonna just knock these out. Okay. I moved to the U.S. three months ago, and I've gained 20 pounds eating the same foods I ate back home, just U.S. brands. Maybe it isn't completely the people's fault that the U.S. is so fat. Huh. Shout out to Big Backs. Huh. <laughs> It's not my fault. <laughs> it ain't my fault. Uh oh. Did I do that? All right. Me and my girl got into it in the middle of a lecture. Halfway through, the professor made eye contact with us. Later that night, we Eiffel Towered that girl. 10 out of 10. What? I could explain it to you, but I'm going to just keep going. Okay. He had a threesome with his girl that he was arguing with in, 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 the, the, in the professor. With the professor. Oh, okay. Do you know what an Eiffel Tower is? No. All right. I'm going to show you the Eiffel Tower. No, no, no. Right? no, no, no. no right. I'm good. Right, I'm, I'm good. YouTube doesn't want us to show it. Okay. That's all right. I'm, I'm good being in, in my bubble. As a brat, I find it really refreshing and attractive when a man can handle my brattiness. It allows me to be a bit softer and more relaxed. It doesn't have to be crazy sexual like Fifty Shades either. It can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. I don't get it. She's a brat. And only a real man can handle her. He has to be a real man so that she can be a brat. And if he can handle it, she'll be, she'll be less of a brat. Okay. No, not okay. I'm light-skinned and green eyes, and I'm thick. But this guy ignores me, but always asks me for gum. I put a piece in my mouth and back in the container and gave it to him the next day. He'd been sucking my toes all semester. That's nasty. It's called toxic confessions. Yeah, what do you nasty. want? That's why I don't take gum from other people. I love gum. But you don't take it from other people. I took gum from you. Oh, okay. Got in trouble too. <laughs> this boy broke AF, took me on an ice cream date, and I told him I can't do dairy. He paid for it though. I blew his bathroom up oh. and still sat on his face. <gasps> made sure his mouth was in my cheeks oh. and I left and I no longer answer his calls. Oh. Broke boys don't Why? deserve any. Mm. But 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 what if something broke? I just want what does that have to do with her him being broke? He shouldn't have taken her to an ice cream date. Well she didn't have to eat the ice cream. But he paid. So she didn't have, have to eat ice cream? You're being weird. Oh my god, that's just gross. I'm 5'9", and I can vouch that men lie about liking tall women for real. If you did, you'd be with tall women. But all the men six feet and up seem to not even look at girls under 5'5". Five five. Even worse, some of y'all be calling us men. Mm. I think she meant over 5'5". Five five. I okay, I don't really care about that one. Yeah. Started dogging out. Wow. Started dogging out women that I talked to, and they love it. Fellas, women do not like men that treat them right. They reward men who treat them like trash. Not true. So don't ever be a good man. Not true. If you want endless cat, be a good man. Ain't going to get you a whiff of it. That's not true. That's facts. You think that's facts? I don't know what kind of women that is. She said, he said good women. I'm going to tell you a story from my past. A long, 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 long time ago. I'm hanging out with my partners, right? And these girls were calling. And so I pick up the phone. I this girl got on the phone. She started running her mouth, bougie light skin, bro. Right? She used to people trying. Oh, you so fine on that, but to me, I want to have none of it. Right? So she started running her mouth at me. I was like, "What?" I just hung up the phone. She called back immediately, ready to argue. Did you just hang up? Hung up again. You know what happened to that girl? I don't know what fantasy land you're talking about. She's that girl. You did not hang She's up that girl. on me twice and I called She's you She's that back. girl. Mr. Sawyer. She you, is that you girl. You live in a fiction world. And whenever you hear this woman talk oh, all this cap oh, 
talk all these lies. No. Talk about no, 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 no. It's all cap. No, Don't no, listen no, to no, her. No, 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 no. Don't listen to no, her. No, 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 no. All the judgment she that has. I got stories, happened. y'all. That I got stories, happened. y'all. That never happened. How do you have this revisionist history? Okay. <laughs> what you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You hung up the on fake, me twice? The fake forced laughter the, should let you, you know. You hung up on me twice? You getting, you getting real? You coming real over to my side now. I am. Because I cannot believe that. <laughs> what, are, what, are kids, what, are you, what do you always say? That's cap. Mm-hmm. That's cap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you hung up on me twice. Okay. I called you. <laughs> All right. Yet here you are. Yet yeah, here you are. I have one story. I'm saving. I'm saving. I'm saving for a while. But I got stories. I have and, stories too. And oh, yeah, you, you gonna make me go. You into have the lies, vault. but I got receipts. You gonna make me go into the vault because you're making up stuff now. Anyways, as I continue with my Uh-oh, toxic we're gonna confessions, add, we're gonna add fiction writer to your repertoire here, Mr. Okay. Sawyer. All right. Surprise visit to see my girl's apartment for the first time. One, she already has the toilet seat up for me. Two, turn on the TV. It's already on ESPN. Three, look in the closet. A man so I can make a new friend. An accommodating queen. That's, 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 just, that's, that's, that's. He's hurt. Yeah. And he turned to comedy. Yeah. <laughs> Pick a number out of one through five. Pick a number. Four. One, two. I'm not a grandma. I'm a glamma. I look deceptively younger than I am, and I use that to my advantage. My grandson, 23, is helping me renovate my basement. I've entertained Jose, a young migrant man who works for him. I'm discreet, but I had no idea that Jose recorded our encounter. This video has been shared many times among the, oh. <laughs> among the migrant workers. I can tell how they look at me when they arrive, and I'm afraid my grandson will find out, especially since Jose slips upstairs to my bedroom. What? I can't even finish this. Especially since Jose slips upstairs to my bedroom instead of doing his work in the basement. Oh. Also, my eyesight is not the best, and I'm not sure if I'm sleeping with Jose each time (gasps) or if the migrants are switching up on me. Oh, no. I don't mind the switch up, but again, I'm trying to contain the situation so my grandson won't find out. Advice? Oh. You're not a grandma. You're a homa. Wow. Wow, I wasn't expecting that turn. Wow. <laughs> so recording without her permission is wrong. That is wrong, but she didn't have a problem with it. Switching up without her permission is wrong. She didn't have a problem with it. So is it wrong? She doesn't have a problem with it. No, nah, it's still wrong. It, it's her. Damn. And then how much longer is the basement going to take? How long does that take? Because he's putting in work in the back instead of in the basement. Maybe that's why. It's a delayed project. Wowza. Oof. So I hope she's not paying overtime, though. <laughs> a few more. You know, if you want to find these stories, you know where you can go. No. Yeah. You can follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and is it there or is it not there? TikTok. At Only Black Kids. Just thought I'd throw that in there. I'm 25 with a six-month-old. My body snapped back in place, and I'm putting myself back out there to find a man with money to help me care for my child. My problem is my 47-year-old mother, who is so busy clubbing that she can't take care of her infant grandchild. Oh. These relics get new wigs, and they think they be popping. Oh. They shouldn't be outside. They should be home to care for their grandchildren. My mama had her fun, and it's time for her to pull her weight and help me raise my child. She offered me shelter, as a mother should. But when I tell her about my evening plans, she always beats me out the door. I need help. I need her to be responsible to her grandchild. I'm not the only young mother feeling this. How do I change her? This is crazy. This is entitlement. This is, this is entitlement, and that's crazy. Six months in, and your, your focus is, I got to go get me a man. Poor child. Yeah. I Where's feel so daddy? bad for these kids. Where the baby daddy at? I don't. She looking for. She looking for a new one. <laughs> no, this thing might turn off. She looking for a new one. Dirty game. These things are crazy. Yeah. Wrap it up for us, Mrs. Sawyer. 
I don't know how to wrap that up. That's <laughs> toxic confession. <laughs> he left that on a very toxic. <laughs> but some level. good stories, some good stories, and always good, good conversations. Be careful with this hand. With my Indeed. babe. With yes. my forever house. <laughs> see him next week. Yes, we'll see you next week. Ask the black kids at gmail.com. Send us your stories. If you want some advice, you want to hear Mrs. Sawyer's opinion, send it to us. Ask the black kids at gmail.com. Bye. Class dismissed. <laughs>